Okay, here's a question for you. Does your waist measurement increase as you get older? Many of us are going to say, yes, absolutely. But does it have to be like that? Dr. Joey Schulman is here to answer that question. So, Joey, please tell us, like, is, is this just a fact of life? Oh, I'm so excited about this segment because I have known this for years in my clinical practice. It is not a fact of life. And now the Journal of Science just came out to support this, showing that actually, wait for it, Trace, metabolism doesn't decrease until you're 60 years old, oh. six zero. And when it does decrease when you're 60, it's ever so slightly. So the middle age spread is not inevitable for all of us. Oh, we've totally bought into this, you know, idea and probably leaned into the yeah. fact that, well, this is just the way it is. It's not just the way it is. But here's my question for you. Why are so many of us gaining fat around the waistline um, as we get older? Like, what's going on? You know, I, I think there's, it's multifactorial. And I think that we have some real problems in our food system, refined flours and sugars that bounce insulin around lifestyle a lot of us are sitting more and there's a sedentary lifestyle and stress and so we know when things are stressful cortisol goes up cortisol and insulin are best friends and they store fat especially in that stomach area so it's no wonder and then if you top it with too much alcohol during the pandemic it happens Mm hmm It sure does. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about blood sugar. We've talked about it uh, many times. It's the reason why your plan works, because there's a focus on blood sugar. But Thank let's you. break it down uh, again for our viewers. What's happening with our blood sugar that's throwing us off? Okay, so Trace, we can't get there unless we're in blood sugar control. And when you're bouncing your blood sugars, you will gain fat in the stomach area. You'll feel foggy. You'll get brain fog. It's, there's multiple symptoms that can pop up. So Things that help blood sugar are protein and fat. So you can see here, I have an example of like an egg wrap or tuna wrap or salmon, or I put pine nuts and uh, toasted almonds on a salad. Because Trace, if I give you a piece of white bread and then I put a piece of protein on it, or I put some fat on it, the protein and fat are the break. So when sugar starts to go up and you start to get this blood sugar high, which then it goes into a crash, if I give you protein or fat, boom. I just given you a break to your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And so instead of having those white processed flours, we're gonna have whole grain and protein or fat when we're eating. Oh, that is such a good visual actually. And I love the fact that I'm seeing Rosie in the background. Hi, sweetheart. Um, okay. I'm so no, sorry, it's fine. she loves when we tape. Yeah, it's a pandemic. <laughs> Let her be a part of it, it's okay. Um, yeah. I want to talk about alcohol uh, because this has been a theme across so many different like locations around the world, cultures. A lot of people dipped into that bottle during the pandemic because it was a high anxiety time and we were all home, me included, and I had to rack it all the way back and like get myself down to a once, in the, a, once a week enjoying a little bit of wine. Um, and if you don't watch it, it gets a little bit of, out of control. So let's talk about alcohol intake and, and how that might be affecting our waistlines. Okay, so first of all, nobody should feel bad because this was a time like no other. And many of my clients were having one to two drinks a night, which you don't think about. That adds up to 14 to 16 drinks a week. The problem with that and weight is it's sugar. And so it's sugar and it's at the wrong time of day and it tends to increase appetite and it's stored around the stomach area. Now, people might turn this off when I say this, but <laughs> daily drinking over the age of 45 for women doesn't usually work. Weekends, special occasions, great. But sugar, the wrong time of day, which is at night, which promotes appetite and blood sugar fluctuations, unless you're hypermetabolic, those people who can eat anything or drink anything, and those people are very far and few between, it usually ends up in your waist. Yeah, well, we need to hear it. You need to say it and we need to hear it because it's actually All good right. for our health, yeah, to be on top of it. Um, here's something I'm really good at, and it is sleeping. So I'm happy that I'm good at sleeping and I really like <laughs> sleeping. Can we talk about how important sleep is? Yeah, so people underestimate how important sleep is for physical and mental well-being. And in terms of weight, lo weight loss, we know that sleep deprivation has a dramatic effect on insulin, cortisol, which promotes fat storage. So your quality and your quantity of sleep are important. So sleeping in a cool room, using lavender, um, not eating a big meal or having caffeine right before bed, the people who are the healthiest 
have optimal sleep. And there's only a few basic pillars when it comes to health and wellness, vitality and aging well. Sleep is one of those essential pillars. And we're looking at seven to nine hours a night. And it's the quality of sleep as well. Absolutely. Get that sleep in. Sleep is just so scrumptious. Oh, I love it so much. I'm happy it's on the list of good things we can do for <laughs> ourselves. Dr. Joey, thank you so much for the info. Uh, we love you and we love what you bring to the show. So You're thank welcome. you for that. So good.